Hi, English 130. Um, I just wanted to pop in and give you a quick overview of Notebook 15 and some of the specific um, Google Doc in-text citation um, tools and tricks that we addressed yesterday. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started on some of that work. So here is our homepage. We click here on modules and take a look at week four stuff. And you'll notice for notebook 15, it's asking you to click around here um, through these citation resources. So pay special attention to the citing sources links here. This MLA style sample paper, this is what your final draft should end up looking like. And then these are all work cited resources. Um, everything else is also super helpful. Uh, we're going to kind of focus today on the MLA style in sex in text citations. But first, I want to show you um, exactly what I'm looking for for this threatened and endangered species paper. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you select all of your text and that all of your text is in Times New Roman, 12 point font, and that it's double spaced. Okay, so I decided to focus my research on the red-legged frog. So when I went up into that text set that we all scrolled through on Friday, Monday, and yesterday, um, this summer boost text set, I clicked here on halting the extinction crisis. I scrolled down until I saw some amphibian stuff. And then I found the California red-tailed, red-legged frog. So if you read through this, you'll notice the Center for Biological Diversity is the organization that created this text. And then this is all an online database that has lists of species. So when I say title, author, and genre, what I mean is you're going to scroll through whatever your text is. So this is my text that I'm going to cite. I'm going to look for an author. I know there's not a specific author. There's not one specific author. Instead, the organization is going to be the author. So the Center for Biological Diversity, that's going to be the author for this one because there's not an individual listed. Then the title of this article is saving the California red-legged frog. So I know that because it's bold and it's at the top like many titles are. And then the genre piece is a little bit more tricky. I'm gonna call this an online database because it's just tracking a bunch of data for us as readers online. So um, sometimes there are blogs, sometimes there's video. This genre is an online database. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to click back over here to my paper. So these are my own words. All the red-legged frogs used to be common. They're on the verge of extinction. I'm going to add in California. This is what it looks like to revise. They are now on the verge of California. The article, Saving the California Red Frog from the Center for Online Database states. And then this is what I actually copied and pasted from the database. So I want to be super clear those three things that I identified earlier. The article, that's a, this is the genre. The article, Saving the Red-Tailed, Red-Legged Frog, that's the title from the Center for Biological Diversity, that's the author in this case, um, states, that's the reporting verb, and then we have the direct quotation. If you weren't sure 
how to use the direct quotation, where the punctuation mark goes, et cetera. I would just want you to go back into our notebook 15 and check MLA style in text citations. And then notice if you cruise through here, it's going to show you examples. Okay, that that period does go at the end outside of the parentheses. And then if there was a page number, it would go inside the parenthetical expression. A period will go on the outside. There's not a page number because this is an online database. Um, so that is how we would cite this source. So I actually need you to go through that process for each and every place that you're either summarizing a text or using stats or facts. And then um, as you're researching, I stumbled across this article when I was just Googling red-legged frog. And this has, this is an example of a group working on conservation projects. So the NAT, San Diego Natural History Museum, NAT stands for San Diego Natural History Museum. I see that up here in the title. This would be an example of an organization you could cite in that second half of the paper. The NAT's herpetology department is exploring do, 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 and you can kind of summarize what their work is and then link like this. So this is that link that many of you have at the end of your papers like this. I just want to show you, you can click this yes, and it will take you to the title. It will, it will insert the title of the URL there for you. So you can say one organization working to save the red legged frog is The, you go back up here, about us, the San Diego Society of Natural History. Then we go here. Period. And then if you want to add an acronym, also called the NAT, there we go. The NAT's website demonstrates one project that is one let's add restoration and then here is a link to that article and then I'm going to continue to then quote or say something about that and either end that sentence here and add a new signal phrase or cite that. And then you'll notice that formatting once again got a little muddy because I was copying and pasting from different articles. So then I wanna make sure it's all black. I wanna make sure since it's a new source, I am indenting that first line. And then that's what it's gonna start looking like to piece this together with index citations. And I don't mind if your hyperlinks are blue. That's totally fine with me. So then you would have these hyperlinks and a works cited page, which I think most of you are, are pretty familiar with. It's more of the in-text citations that I, I saw students needed help with. 
Um, so I hope that was um, clarifying for you and you can practice inserting hyperlinks, uh, mentioning title, author, and genre, and text. And then this is something that you're just going to work out through the drafting process throughout today. Yep. Let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to reading your endangered species papers. Bye-bye.